I don't know what this road is. All right, I'm gonna go left, gonna indicate left. Oh, I just curbed, just curbed that hard. Welcome back everybody to Tesla Driver. I hope you're doing very well. Today we're gonna to be doing a city tour of Oxford here in the UK. Oxford is one of our most favorite, fam famous and favorite cities, in my opinion. I think it's a great place. Whoa, we're going really far over here. My gosh, that was awful. What an absolute awful start to a video, but we're gonna obviously leave it in so we, so you guys can see it all. This morning, I also got a brand new update in the car. 2020.16.12 is now here in the UK and also in uh, New Zealand and Australia. The lucky buggers over there have actually got themselves traffic light aware stopping and starting. So the car will actually stop and start at traffic lights and at stop signs in Australia and in New Zealand. However, here in the UK, we sadly didn't get that update. Uh, so I don't think really there's any big changes with this update for us in autopilot here as you can see we're entering into a 30 the car still hasn't picked it up so we're gonna have to put it down to 30 but we are just flowing with traffic here and as you can see most of the for, actually this is for people who don't drive in the UK or just don't drive yet or maybe too young to drive a lot of people drive over the speed limit by 5 to 10 miles in these kind of areas and um, yeah whoa okay whoa look at that did you see how it it wasn't a hundred percent sure uh, what lane to be in there and actually to be totally honest I think it's picked the wrong lane I'm going to take this lane over here because we're going to go straight on but did you see how it did that that was really strange it almost didn't follow the road markings at all actually it won't let us autopilot out of here so that's a bit of a shame uh, we're coming up with some red lights anyway okay they've turned green now so we can turn it on now and there we go autopilot is doing its magic and it's aborted oh that couldn't have been a worse timing i literally said magic as i said that it aborted so we're on to a 50 but the car again here thinks it's a 70 it's definitely not it is a 50 so in this update yet again there's been no speed sign recognition or actual change of just speed awareness or slowing you down or speeding you up before you enter a different speed zone. So kind of annoying, but okay, that hopefully will come soon. And also someone on Twitter that I follow called Green has actually shown that they've put in some new animations, um, some new visualizations as well, including roundabouts, uh, which you can see on the screen now. So hopefully, I think my roundabout video the other day actually made um, that guy, I don't know if you saw that, that guy on the left was, was carrying a completely destroyed bicycle. And I don't know if he destroyed it himself or he found it, I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, yeah, so there's going to be uh, a roundabout update looking like it's going to happen very, very soon. And I'm hoping that my video made that happen. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if it did. But if you're enjoying the daily content, hit the like button down below. Uh, and if you're enjoying the city tours restarting because we're out of lockdown, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe and turn on that notification bell. And this is where it's going to really start its city test. And again, the biggest issues that we have in cities, don't forget, is uh, other cars parked on the side of the road, just way too thinner roads. Yeah, you can see here, as we go into a 40, we're just flowing with traffic, but we do need to slow it down beforehand. But you'll see, you know, that's just the flow. And I think hopefully, I don't know how it's going to get around that because legally you shouldn't, but you know, every single body does at least a few miles an hour over as you come into a slower speed limit. So I'm intrigued to see if they change that or I don't know. I just don't know how they're going to do it, to be totally honest, without it making some complications for other drivers. So we're going to be going left here. So I've put my indicator on. There is nobody behind us for a while. So I'm hoping that this will, will actually get going. Here we go. We've got no one on our side. You can see there, it picked up the orange, cha changed it to green there. Going to go left, going to indicate left. Oh, I just curbed. Just curbed that hard. That was on autopilot and it just curbed the side. Ugh. Did not like that at all. So that was the back left wheel uh, that just curbed there as we went around that corner. But as you saw, it wasn't actually going around the whole corner itself. So I wonder why it got so close and curbed it. And here's two photos of the damage. Now, I actually went back and looked over this clip several times. I think, personally, the autopilot was following the paint line on the left on the curb, and that's why it was getting so close. However, if you actually look at the curb, the curb is completely destroyed and has jagged rocks, jagged bits of the curb itself sticking out. And that is what my tire hit, and that is why it is so badly damaged. So, what do I do here, folks? Whose fault is this? Do you think this is the car's fault? Is it my 
my fault? Or is it the council's fault for the fact that the curb wasn't maintained? Because if that was a maintained curb, you would have just rolled up it and just jumped back off it and you wouldn't have got any damage. Or maybe a tiny bit of damage to the alloys, but definitely not piercing through a tire like that. Uh, that completely ripped apart my tire. Let me know down below in the comment section. I'm actually genuinely interested to know what everyone's opinion is because I'm kind of stuck in the middle of what to do. However, I will be getting this replaced very, very soon and I want to shout out our patrons. They have paid for this wheel to be sorted. I've not touched any of the Patreon money uh, that we've had over the last six months and there's about $500 in there and that's going to pay for a brand new wheel. So thank you guys so much for supporting. That's what I'm using the Patreon money on. Anything to go into the channel to help the channel and uh, yeah, and fix the car in this case so that I can keep recording videos. Feel free to become a Patreon. The link is down below in the description. Or that's actually the first time maybe in six to nine months that my Tesla has curbed on autopilot. So it's been an impressive run, but we have officially curbed. Okay, carrying on. So this is just where I had my sat nav set to. Let's set it now to the University of Oxford and we'll drive down. Oh, it's literally straight down this road apparently. So we'll just let's just go into the city and then we'll have a little drive around, a little bit of fun. And you can see here, they've got a lot of speed cameras. So we're gonna keep the speed exact. So we're gonna stay at 30. Again, picking up the lights nicely. It's picking up a bin, and there you go. You see, it's picking up a lot of boxes and stuff as bins. Okay, so this lady on the left here with her kid on the bike, that bike does not look safe or straight at all. Oh my God, that poor kid. That is not safe at all. That, that trailer is at an angle, like such an angle. I feel so bad for that kid. It's picking it up though. It's picking it up. Look, they're driving alongside us there. That's quite cool to see. Oh, and the bus came past at a perfect time. So as the lines disappeared, the car actually went over to the left, which is good. That's a, a good improvement. Again, some more cyclists, picking up the cyclists well. Sadly here though, as we come behind this uh, lorry, it's obviously not gonna be able to do it itself. Didn't pick up the human, or at least it, it didn't show the man that was there at all. And I've never been down here, so I actually don't know if this is one road or two roads or what, but it's autopilot's definitely not gonna turn on here. You can see that it's picking up loads and loads of different people. Oh, this isn't a one way, wow. I actually thought this was a one way by the, the way this was built and stuff. I haven't been through Oxford uh, in years and years, so I don't really know the area very well at all, but we'll get, we'll get used to it, I guess. I'm not sure I like the, the road, it's quite a loud road. Uh, off goes the cyclist, did it pick her up? Didn't show her at all. But don't worry, it is showing all the bins. So that bin there that it's currently picking up is actually a, uh, a bench. So I'm not sure why it's showing it as a bin, but that, that's, a, that's a bench right there, that's a bench. There are bins over there that I can see, but the car's not actually picking up the, the blue bins over there or the silver bins. We are picking up people walking behind us and around us though, which is pretty cool. And here we go, accelerating back out of traffic. And we got someone walking right past us. Is it going to pick her up behind us? Yeah, it did. It showed her very, very split split second there. Uh, it showed us the person behind us. I did pull it off there to let him go. Um, yeah. So we're going through the red lights anyway. So it will autopilot over on this side of the road. Um, but it's just going to come to a complete stop, I guess, here. No, it didn't, but I'm not pushing it and I'm not testing it in that scenario. As you all saw from my last videos, like I only push it in extreme circumstances when it's 100% safe. And I want to shout out Electric who did a post and a report on my last roundabout video. And they actually highlighted how safe I was and how well I did it. So shout out to them. I appreciate it when people know that I'm taking these extra precautions. So will it dodge this? Will it go around this? Yes, it does. Okay, it did go around it. Not as... Not as much as I would like, not as like far around it as I, was, as I would like, but still it did go around it. Picking up the arrows, picking up the cyclists, picking up the humans. These bollards in the middle, again, it's 100% not sure. <laughs> that made no sense. It's not sure whether they are cones, they're bins, or they're poles. Let's see what it thinks this one is. It's a cone, it's not a cone. It might be a cone. It kind of was a cone. It wasn't 100% sure again. More cyclists. Yep, there we go, two cyclists. It's definitely picking up cyclists more. That's really good. We did comment about that, and that is uh, nice to see. Again, picking up the bins, no problem. We can see bins. What about there's two poles and a cone? If it can show those poles, it's showing two cones and a bin. 
So like I said, the visualization is good, but it's, you know, it's, it's, still, not, it's still not perfectly there yet. And that will, that will come in time. This is quite a nice city to drive through, actually. It's a really easy, straight road in so far. And we're just gonna go straight up here to this, this center section. I really hope my car hasn't curbed hard. Fingers crossed. Didn't show either of those two cyclists. And yet again, it's when we're going through areas that have lots of trees and stuff. Oh my God, the cyclist behind me just cut out in front of a bus to overtake. And I don't think he even looked. Um, yeah, so I think sometimes it, it struggles with cyclists because of the clothes that they're wearing and stuff. If everyone was wearing high vis, it'd probably be fine, but they're not, so it's not fine. So again, thinks it's a bin, but that was actually just a sign. That was a, a Banbury Road sign that it thought was a bin. Again, picking up bins everywhere. I can't wait for the day that little doggos like that are on the visualization. That'd be so cool to see people walking with dogs. That'd be so cool. So again, the red lights up ahead is picking it up nicely as red lights. I've got a bus behind me, so let's turn this around and see if it knows that it's a bus. Yes, it does show that it's a bus. And it's also, of course, showing another bin. And there we go. As we go through this intersection, it's showing people, bikes, arrows, the lot. Really quite impressive. Again, though, didn't show her as we went past her. I mean, again, she is in a bike lane, so technically it's not a problem for us and we shouldn't be focusing on it. But I would just like to see that you can see it, if that makes sense. So this is the University of Oxford all here, guys. Very prestigious. There's also Oxford Brooks here. Two great places to go to school. Okay, bringing us down to 20. I didn't even see us enter a 20, so that was good for it to see. Oh yeah, it was just back there. And I promise you we're gonna be the only car going 20 down here, okay? Right, so this enters into like um, a two lane road. Is this a three lane road? Is this, what is this? Wow, okay, I have no idea because I've never been here before. I don't know what this road is. I don't know how to, how to drive it but it just looks like an insanely wide road in the middle of a city. Right, we're gonna be pushed over now. Is the car gonna push over? The car needs to push over. No, look at that. It actually went across for the local access and not for not the way it was meant to be going, which is this way. So that's kind of strange. I'm not sure why I did that. It's, there's no way it's gonna take this right turn. No, that was going straight on. You could see that it was just locked and uh, going straight down that wrong way there. So there, it didn't slow down for the corner. It didn't stop. In all fairness, I haven't actually got the sat-nav on. So I'm just gonna put the sat-nav on super quick to a location. Considering there's no road markings though, it's actually keeping us to the left and it's doing it okay. We can't go right here because of the cones, but the car is putting us in that lane. Wow. And again, it's not slowing us down and it's not stopping us for those cones. What I'm gonna do is because Elon tweeted this out uh, and he said autopilot's prime directive or whatever is don't crash. I'm gonna test that out with some cones and I'm just gonna drive at them because I'm pretty sure it would just go through those cones back there. And I'm pretty sure it would hit a lot of cones. Oh, I didn't even realize that this is, I, yeah, okay, this way. This is a really confusing area. Okay, back on it. Going over the bridge now. Oh my God, bumps galore. Bumps galore. Again, showing an electricity box there as a bin, but it is picking up the lights nicely. And it's driving nice and slow through this bit of Oxford. It is asking us to go out that way and across, but I actually want to come back in and kind of just go through that central bit again, or at least have another look at it. So again here, I'm not sure really what this is. This is a roundabout and it is aborting. So it did abort there. And we're going to follow this ranger wherever the ranger's going. The ranger is going this way. These are weird roundabouts. I've never seen roundabouts like that before. So that's pretty, pretty interesting to see. Now we actually came across some of these in Amsterdam and it's hell for the car because it actually just sits right in the middle of this road. Now this is a two lane road with no central markings, but it does. All right. Um, but it does have cycle lanes on each side there. It didn't know that was a roundabout and it didn't show any kind of stopping for it. Uh, but yeah, when it doesn't have the lanes down the middle, but it has them slightly tighter, the car seems to think it's a single track road and it will just sit in the middle and that will cause mayhem for absolutely everybody. Again here, the road markings do disappear, but I'm hoping it keeps true to the left. 
Yeah, and I'm assuming this bus stop will push us to the right, which it has done. See, it's following the bus stop lines there and going through here nicely. Yeah, that's good. Don't touch that side. Oh, got a little bit close, but did pretty well. And again, lights looking good. Arrows on the floor. It's picking up the bike markings as well on the floor, which is really cool to see. Again here, picked the correct lane, continuing forwards. I'm not sure if the sat-nav has anything to do with it, but I do keep it on just in case there's somewhere in the, in the code that will follow sat-nav slightly. That's all we need, just a slight following of it. Really smooth around this bit though, really nicely. And again, obviously, as we come up to a T-junction here, there is, uh, there is no way that the car is gonna do it. Let's see what happens. No, just got onto it and then it just starts aborting. Um, so we don't we don't want to try it on those because it can't do it obviously can't do the corner because of how tight it is, but also it's just not programmed to stop, look, and it's not programmed to stop on those checkered boxes yet. So it does stop on those checkered boxes and it needs to learn that those are a no stopping zone. So like to give space and you know a little bit of leeway and stuff. Let's see if it picks up anything for the police. No, it actually didn't show anything different. Would be quite cool because I know it does defend, uh, it does differentiate. Oh my God, this word is out of my brain for a second. It makes it, it dif differentiate. It differentiates. Wow, do you ever have one of those like mind farts where you just don't know the word? It differentiates and it actually does show within the system that it knows that it's an emergency vehicle. So I'm intrigued to see how it reacts to that in the future and if it reacts in a different way at all. Okay, we're going out to the right here in our lane still, but it did kind of throw out a little bit strange. Again, I think the whole like future of cities and stuff is cars won't be coming into the city anyway. So it's not gonna be needing to do the more severe driving we did through the city center because you, you just don't wanna bring your car in there anyway. Here we wanna stick to the left. And I'm thinking the bus stop might actually do this for us. Yeah, it did pull us over a little bit as the lines are quite faded. Oh, again, I kind of wish it had some sort of system to miss big bumps or debris in the road. Picking up all the bins, it must be bin day here because there's a lot of bins out. So I only ever used to come to Oxford. Uh, I only ever used to come to the Kassam Stadium and then leave again, but that's because I support Swindon. So <laughs> that's, that's my like history in Oxford is just coming to support Swindon and then kind of leaving. But now I'm driving through by myself. It's really nice. Actually, a really nice place. This car's coming off to the left. No, he's not. So we need to be in the right-hand lane here, but is it going to pick it? Yes, it did. Okay, so there we go. Is that following the sat-nav? What do we think? Do we think we're following the sat-nav there, guys? Let me know in the comment section, or was that just pot luck that it took the one that I wanted it to take? I think it, it could probably be 50-50. Uh, I think that was, pro that was probably pot luck on that one, if I'm being totally honest. So here, no lines, but working well, following this polo. Nice and easy, breezing through. Thinks that's a, a diamond for some reason. It wasn't a diamond. I've never actually seen a diamond on the road here in the UK. Oh gosh, okay. Right, we're going right. We are now apparently going right. I mean, the lights worked for us, but this wasn't the plan, okay. I like a little deviation, so that's good. Oh my, oh gosh, oh gosh. Okay, well, it's bumpy. We've got a bus in front of us. That could work out well for us actually here. This could slow us and keep us at a good speed. So I've got it currently set to three, but I'm gonna bring it back to five behind this bus. And hopefully that will give the car enough space to see and act if it needs to. Picking up the cones. Again, another diamond there for an arrow. So it thinks a lot of arrows are diamonds for some reason, and I'm not, I'm not sure why it's thinking that. All right, bus is going left. Oh, we're going left as well, okay. So I'm just gonna indicate, and I'm just not gonna touch anything. Let's just see, is it gonna turn? Nope. <laughs> I was just gonna leave it as long as possible. You never know, it might do something strange, and it might have gone down there. There was no one else around, there was no one behind me. And again, into a 30, let's see how quickly. So it has updated apparently the GPS, but you can see there it's still saying it's a 60, even though this is definitely a 30, still saying it's a 60. So 
it has updated it, I guess, somewhere, but it's not showing the improvements on here just yet. So the bus is going for an overtake. I actually need to turn left like just after these cyclists. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go for the overtake. And I'm just gonna wait behind them here. There's four of them there. The car's picking up two of them. Um, is it gonna show all four? But I mean, just look at how well it's doing it. It's sitting behind so nicely. It's not like nagging, it's not pushing, it's not doing anything strange. It did really, really well there. Really happy with that. Okay, oh, maybe it thinks it's a 60 because it's a 60 just here. Oh no, actually it thinks it's a 30 now. Brilliant, as soon as I came on here, it thought it was a, a 60 then back to a 30, then up to a 60. Okay, so we're coming onto a dual carriageway and yeah, that's not gonna happen. That was coming way too fast at it. And we're gonna have to do a nice little launch here. Ready, go. That's so fun. What a car. What a car. Oh, wait, I'm coming off. I'm going left. Uh-oh. Uh. Meow. Uh, okay. So it won't autopilot. Oh, it will. Oh, it won't. It said it would for like a split second, then it then it wouldn't again. Uh, okay, now it says it will autopilot. All right, we're autopiloting and we're gonna autopilot here onto the motorway. So that was our drive through Oxford. It only sets it up to 60 for some reason, but we do want to obviously be going 70. It's gonna swing us across slightly, asking us to change lanes. Look at that, look at the size of it. Going for a lane change. And that was actually the smoothest it has ever come onto a motorway before. I still don't like the system where I have to indicate on. I really wish just like it indicates off for, oh, there's a fallen down cone, fallen down cone. It didn't pick it up. It showed it as a fallen, it showed it as a non-fallen cone. Oh, all of that hype and it didn't actually work. That's a real shame. So I'm actually gonna indicate, this is interesting because those are parked. Let's see what it thinks about it. No, it didn't have a problem going across there. Sometimes it has a problem going into adjacent lanes with lorries and stuff, uh, but didn't have a problem there. But so far, I haven't seen a huge improvement in the city driving. It's pretty much the same. We're waiting for that big upgrade, that big update to make the difference. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Thank you for watching the video. I'll be continuing the Autopilot City Tour every single weekend. So make sure you comment down below the city I should go to next. And uh, yeah, where do you want to see me drive? Until then, don't forget, drive safe.